Three friends, Jim, Alex, and Chris, pick hats from a box. In the box, there are two black hats and one white hat. Jim sees the hats on Alex and Chris. Alex only sees Chris's hat, and Chris can't see any hats. When asked if they know the colors of their hats, Jim and Alex both say no. Chris confidently says that he knows his hat is black. How has he figured it out? Here's how it works. Jim's no means there's at least one black hat between Alex and Chris. Alex says no too, indicating that he sees a black hat on Chris. If it was white, Alex would know he's wearing the black since there's only one white hat. So Chris is sure that his hat is black. No magic or tricks, just logic. Detective Sue finds herself Uh entangled in a case involving the theft of precious diamonds from a vault fortified with high-security measures. The list of suspects is diverse. There's a janitor, a security guard, even the CEO. Who is the thief? The thief is the janitor. Even in a high-security vault, the diamonds should still remain dust-free. The janitor's role involves cleaning them, so he had access to the jewels. On a chilly, wintry day, a figure stood in the center of someone's front yard. This individual remained in place for several weeks without any movement, and the yard's owner didn't mind it. Eventually, this person was gone. Who was he? It was a snowman. Meet Vampire Vlad. He invites his close nocturnal friends for a -a one-of-a-kind dinner gathering. Interestingly, the dinner party takes place during the daytime. All of his vampire companions accept the invitation without questioning it. And they arrive without encountering any problems. How on earth is this possible? Well, it turns out Vlad is the master of planning. He chose to host his vampire friends during a solar eclipse. Vampire Vlad has another story to puzzle you. One day, he found himself on a remote island. There seemed to be no humans there. To his relief, he stumbled upon a thriving garden filled with garlic. Vlad smiled with contentment. Garlic is dangerous for vampires. Then why did he laugh? That garlic garden implied the presence of a skilled gardener on the island. There was a human somewhere around. This discovery kindled Vlad's hope of a future food source. Here's the last one of the vampire-themed puzzles. In a quaint village, three individuals cast shadows, but one claims to be a vampire. The townsfolk wonder which of these three is the true vampire. Well, who is the vampire? The vampire is the one whose shadow behaves weirdly. While regular human shadows mimic people's movements, the vampire's shadow moves independently. Look, the human shadow synchronized with their steps, but the vampire shadow has a mind of its own. Steve met a tragic fate on a Saturday afternoon. His wife claimed she was in the shower at that time. The chef says he was making breakfast. And the gardener was busy pruning hedges. Who is the likely criminal? It's the chef. Uh The whole thing happened in the afternoon, but the chef said that he had been making breakfast. At a carnival, a boy made a bet with a man. The man said he could write the boy's exact weight on a piece of paper. If he succeeded, the boy would give him $50. 
If not, the boy would get $50. The boy thought he could always say he weighed more or less, so he agreed. However, in the end, the boy had to pay the man $50. How did the man win? The man wrote your exact weight on the paper, and that was exactly what he said he would do. A person finds themselves confined in a room with two possible escape routes. The initial exit is an arrangement of magnifying glasses that scorch anything passing through, because the sun is scorching. The second exit is guarded by a fire-spewing dragon, which is merciless to intruders. How can the captive make their escape? They should wait until nightfall when the sun is down and then make a dash through the first exit. A criminal has been sentenced to face a fatal fate, and he is given a choice to meet his end in one of three rooms. A room engulfed in a blazing fire, a room occupied by assassins, or a room inhabited by lions that haven't eaten a meal in years. Uh -oh. Which room should he select? He should opt for the room with the lions. If they haven't eaten in years, they aren't alive anymore. Once, a magician bragged about being able to hold his breath underwater for 6 minutes. A kid overheard this and exclaimed, and I can do 10 minutes with no gear. The magician bet $10,000. Oddly, the kid won. Do you know how? She was just holding a glass of water above her head for 10 minutes. A monkey, a squirrel, and a bird are having a race to the tip of a ginormous coconut tree, all of them eyeing a delicious banana at the top. Who's going to be the lucky winner here? The monkey, the squirrel, or the bird? Oh please, the answer is none of them, because bananas don't grow on coconut trees. There are five apples in a basket and five people in the room. Each person takes one apple. Yet in the end, one apple is left in the basket. How come? The last person took an apple together with the basket. There's a person who lives on the 14th floor of a building. When they take the elevator downstairs, they stop at the first floor. When they go upstairs, they only go to the 10th floor. And after that, they use the stairs the rest of the way. But here's the twist. When they're in the elevator with someone else, or when it's raining, they go straight to the 14th floor. So what's the deal with this weird behavior? This person is a child. They can't reach the 14th floor button. When it's raining, this kid has an umbrella and can use it to press the button. And when they're with someone else, this other person can press the button for them. A driver goes the wrong way on a one-way street. But when he passes a few cops, they don't stop him. Why? Because he's walking, not driving. Two fathers and two sons go to the mall and then return home in a car. However, when they get out of the car at home, only three people exit. How is it possible? Did they forget someone at the mall? Well, it's because we've got three generations here. A grandfather, a father, and a son. So even though there are two fathers and two sons, there are only three individuals. 
A couple went on a three-week-long vacation, taking great care to secure their home and asking a neighbor to look after it during their absence. Upon their return, the wife discovered that her valuable jewelry was gone. How did it happen? She had hidden her precious jewelry inside the freezer in a bag with frozen food. But during their absence, there was a power outage. The frozen food went bad, Uh and the neighbor, trying to be helpful, threw away the spoiled food. Bye-bye, jewelry! Imagine finding yourself in a pitch-black room. You have just a matchbox, a candle, and a lamp. You have only one match. The question Uh is, what should you light first? Easy peasy. You light the match first. Think of an eight-letter word that remains a valid word even when you remove one letter at a time until only one letter is left. It's almost impossible to guess, but give it a try. The word is starting. You can take away letters one by one like this. Starting, staring, string, sting, sing, sin, in, and finally, I. Did you find those tough? Let me know in the comments. Elsa was 17 years old the day before yesterday. Next year, she'll turn 20. How come? It's possible if the present day is January 1st, while Elsa's birthday is on the 31st of December. The day before yesterday, on December 30, she was still 17 years old. Yesterday, on the 31st of December, she turned 18. Thus, this year, Elsa turns 19 and next year, 20. Elsa and her sister Helga explore an old attic in their parents' house. It's very dark and dirty. After that, they go downstairs to have some lunch. Helga's face is all covered with dust, while Elsa's face is super clean. But still, only Elsa goes to the bathroom to wash her face. Why? Elsa noticed that her sister's face was dirty, so she thought her face must be dirty too. As for Helga, she saw that Elsa's face was clean and assumed that her own face was clean too. After lunch, Elsa and Helga go for a walk across an enchanted forest. They reach the riverbank, but the bridge is closed for repairs. The sisters notice two dwarfs fishing in a boat near the bridge. They agree to help the sisters, but their boat is very tiny. It can fit either one sister or two dwarves. Luckily, they managed to solve this issue. Elsa and Helga cross the river on the same boat. How? Well, first of all, one of the dwarves brought his fellow on the opposite bank. Then he headed back for the sisters alone. Helga got into the boat and crossed the river. She gave the second dwarf the boat, and he returned to the opposite bank. He picked his fellow dwarf and brought him to Helga. Then one of the dwarves swam to Elsa and passed the boat to her. She crossed the river and joined Helga, and finally, the second dwarf returned to his fellow. Helga and Elsa keep on walking and get lost in the forest. There are three roads to the nearest town. The first route is filled with mutant plants which feed on humans. The second path leads through an ice cave with a hungry dragon frozen inside a huge ice cube. The third route leads through a village of fairies. Their magic makes humans lose their minds. Which way is safe? (laughs) 
Well, the dragon is trapped inside the ice cube, so it's not that dangerous. Finally, the sisters reach the town. They're walking down the main street. Suddenly, someone throws an orange right at Helga's head. Elsa identifies the apartment from which the fruit fell out and goes there to complain. She knocks, and a young man opens the door right away. Elsa explains that her sister was hit by an orange that fell from his window. But the guy says, I was washing my dog when you knock. Only me and my pet live here, so you confuse the floors. But Elsa didn't believe him. Why? According to the man, he was bathing his only pet. But the dog's hair is dry. Therefore, his story is fake. Elsa and Helga enter the local home decor shop. Helga takes a picture of her sister standing in front of the mirror. Can you spot anything odd in this photo? Take a closer look at the mirror. Elsa's hands are reflected wrong as well as the sale poster behind her. She must be a vampire. (laughs) Just kidding. The sisters continue exploring the shop. But suddenly, Elsa begins to scream and runs away. That's because one of these ladies is not alive. Can you guess who? The first woman is an ordinary human. There's a mirror behind her. The third lady has a painting of herself in the background. And the second lady, who's looking over her shoulder, is a phantom. Her reflection in the mirror doesn't match the reality. Elsa decides to hide in a building nearby. Surprise! It's a pet shop. Elsa wanders around it and spots one weird detail. Can you see it too? The turtle is wearing sunglasses. The locals tell Elsa and Helga about a creepy werewolf who has been scaring the citizens for several weeks. They only know that this werewolf is a lady, and she has a husband. He's the only person who can calm her down. Elsa finds three suspects who might be the werewolf's husband, but none of them admits it. Can you find him? He's the second guy. There are suspicious brownish hairs on his clothes, although his own hair is blonde. The next day, Helga has a birthday party. Elsa goes to the bakery to purchase a cake for her. She's late, so she rushes over and bumps into a waiter. Elsa hits her head and forgets what cake Helga asked her to buy. She remembers just three things. It shouldn't have any green elements, the cake frosting shouldn't include more than one color, and it must have at least one berry. Can you help Elsa find the correct cake? Elsa should take the fourth cake. It's a chocolate cheesecake, so it doesn't have anything green. The glazing is brown and is decorated with cherries. A perfect match. Elsa buys the cake and leaves. The bakery is located inside the highest tower in town. Elsa enters the elevator to go down, but she hits the wrong button and finds herself on the roof. She decides to take some pictures with the iconic huge clock installed at the top of this tower. Oops! Elsa drops her phone from the roof. She decides to leave, but someone has already locked the door. And the elevator won't work. So she's trapped on the roof. Luckily, Elsa can still change the time of the clock. What time should Elsa set on the clock to make someone notice and rescue her? If she sets 5.05 on the clock, it'll look like an SOS signal. Finally, Elsa escapes from the tower and heads to the parking lot. Here's her car. Can you figure out the number of the place where it's parked? Eighty-seven. Elsa arrives home. Helga shows her vacation photos sent by her new boyfriend, Kyle. In this case, you can see Kyle, his friend Bob, and a humanoid robot, Neo. 
Neo is standing next to Bob. A person wearing the yellow mask is not a man. What color is Kyle's mask? According to the terms, only the third guy can be Kyle. So his mask is blue. The birthday party is going well. It's almost midnight, so Elsa goes to the kitchen and adds candles on the birthday cake. Suddenly, she remembers that the only lighter in the house is upstairs in her room. She leaves the cake at the table for a minute. Then Elsa returns and sees the cake smashed all over the floor. She questions three suspects. Lauren says, I was in the living room all night. I don't know who did it. Wendy says, I went outside to watch the full moon. It's so beautiful tonight. Kyle says, I was shooting a TikTok dance with Helga. Who ruined the cake? Wendy, take a look out the window. The moon is not full. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Busted. The next morning, Helga wakes up earlier than Elsa and checks her feed. Breaking news, a legendary thief ran away from a nearby prison and now creeps around the town. He's a talented shapeshifter, so no one knows for sure what he might look like. Suddenly, Helga hears someone ringing on the door. She opens and faces two guys who introduce themselves. Bob is a gardener from a nearby park, and Peter is a garbage man. Both guys want to use a bathroom, so they ask Helga to let them in. But only one of them is safe to invite over. Can you guess who? Bob is wearing clothes with red stains, but he's also holding a brush, so he was probably just painting a fence. Let's take a closer look at Peter's facial hair. One mustache has come unglued. It's fake. So he must be the runaway criminal from the news. Now Carol was invited to a Halloween party in an abandoned house. Her friends asked if she was up for a challenge, and she said yes. Soon enough, she was locked inside a room. In this room, there was one door and three light switches next to it. Behind the door was an empty closet with nothing but a light bulb. Her task was to figure out which switch controls the light bulb inside the closet. She could flip the switches in whatever way she wanted, but once she opened the door, she couldn't touch the switches anymore. After some minutes of thinking, she was able to get it right. How did Carol do it? Okay, let's go step by step. She flipped switch number one and then waited a few minutes. She flipped it back to off and then immediately flipped switch number two. Then she opened the door and checked the light. The bulb was off, so she discovered that it wasn't switch number two that controlled the light. So she decided to touch the bulb to test if it was hot or cold. If the bulb had been cold, that would have meant that switch number three controlled it. But the bulb was hot. So that meant that switch number one controlled one. Way to go, Carol! To get back to the party, Carol Uh had to solve another riddle. There were two hourglasses in front of her. One hourglass measures seven minutes, and the other one measures four minutes. She needed to time nine minutes using both hourglasses. How could she do it? First, she turned both hourglasses at the same time. By the time the 4-minute glass finished, there were still 3 minutes left on the other one. She flipped the 4-minute glass again. When the 7-minute glass was empty, there was 1 minute left on the other glass. And once the 4-minute glass emptied again, there was 1 minute's worth of sand at the bottom half of the 7-minute timer. She flipped it over again, so there was 1 minute worth of sand on the top of the glass. And when the 7-minute timer finally emptied again, 9 minutes elapsed in total. Now, look at this party scene. Everyone is dancing in their Halloween costumes and having an enjoyable time. You've been told that one of these people is a real vampire. Can you figure out who it is?
Let's see. The guy on the left is drinking something red, but he has a shadow, so he can't be a real vampire. The second lady looks creepy. Could be her. But if you look closely at the mirror on the wall, you'll see her reflection, so it can't be her. Ah, and we can also see the reflection of the fourth guy in the mirror. This only leaves one lady left. She must be the real vampire. Anna sat down to watch her favorite TV show. She made some popcorn, turned on the TV, and nestled comfortably to binge-watch an entire season. Her cat Pepper sat down next to her. But after 5 minutes of screen time, Anna suddenly passed out. Look at the image. Can you guess what happened there? Anna's cat Pepper got scared with a loud thump that came from the TV. It jumped on top of Anna and it scared the life out of her. That's why she passed out. Brendan was camping alone in a remote location. He left his campsite and hiked 3 miles south. Then he turned east and hiked for another 3 miles. After that, he turned north and hiked for another 3 miles. After walking 9 miles, he was back to the exact same point from where he had left off. Plus, he got there just in time to find a bear trying to open his tent Uh and steal his food. Look at the image. Can you guess the only place in the world where Brendan could be right now? It's the North Pole. That's the only place where you can hike for 3 miles south, east, and north and end up exactly where you left off. Frazier bought a cozy home in Vancouver. On a sunny day, he decided to take his dog out for a walk. When he let his dog off the leash, it ran extremely far away from him. At some point, the dog was opposite him across a huge lake. Frazier called his dog, who managed to cross safely to the other side of the lake without getting wet or using a boat. Can you guess how the dog managed to do it? Well, that's a trick question, but the dog could easily cross the lake since it was frozen. Your best friend invited you for brunch at a place called Wally's World. As soon as you arrive there, the hostess tells you that you need to solve a riddle to get inside. She tells us that there is only one rule at Wally's World. Over there, there is pizza with cheese, but no pizza with sausage. There is pepper, but no salt. There is a door, yet no entrance or exit. With this information, Uh can you guess what the law is? Everything in Wally's world must contain double letters. So things such as pizza, pepper, and cheese are allowed inside. Woo! That sure wasn't obvious, huh? On a snowy winter afternoon, Dr. Brown was resting in front of the fireplace. Suddenly, somebody threw Uh a snowball at his window. The hit was so strong that the glass shattered. Dr. Brown stood up just in time to see three neighborhood boys running away. They were brothers with the names John Smith, Mark Smith, and Dave Smith. The next day, a paper note was left on Dr. Brown's door. There it was written, a question mark, then Smith. He threw the snowball. Dr. Brown knew immediately which brother had done it. Can you figure it out too? It was Mark. You see, the note said, question Mark Smith. He threw the snowball. But the boys were clever and put a question mark instead to test Dr. Brown's detective abilities. Henry was backpacking through Brazil by himself. One evening at around 8 p.m., he got very hungry and decided to look for a cozy restaurant to have some dinner. He walked into a traditional restaurant only to find a customer and a waiter arguing over something. The customer said that he had ordered clam soup, while the waiter was saying he had only ordered a cup of tea. Henry saw something that immediately showed him who was lying. Can you find out too?
The customer is lying. Behind him, there's a huge sign that says the restaurant only serves soup from 1 to 4 p.m. Since it was 8 p.m. in the evening, the waiter would have never accepted the customer's order in the first place. Cheryl ran into her house extremely worried. I set off as soon as I heard the news, she told the police officer. I was at my parents' house in another town. What's happened to my husband? Well, the police said, somebody hurt Mr. Moffat, and he ended up in the hospital. He's going to be okay, but we still need to find out who did this to him. The police officer has questioned three suspects so far. Mr. Moffat's secretary said, I was sent to visit Mr. Moffat's business partner in the morning. Some important documents needed signatures. The cook said, I haven't left the kitchen today. Mr. Moffat wanted me to prepare a meal for him and his wife. The housekeeper said, I didn't hear anything today. I was doing some household chores all day long. After that, I was so tired, I decided to take a nap. The police officer realized who the culprit was in no time. Can you figure out who did it? It was the cook. Mr. Moffat didn't ask him to cook anything for his wife, since she had been out of town all along. Sammy was visiting her grandmother during Halloween. When her grandmother went to get groceries for their Halloween dinner, Sammy started hearing strange noises from the attic. He got curious and wanted to find out what was making them, so he climbed there. He noticed that a big wooden box was glowing. He went to open it, but it was locked. Luckily, his grandmother was a bit forgetful, so she left some clues around the room. Can you help Sammy figure out the digit passcode? Take a look at these books stacked next to the box. Did you notice that these four books have numbers instead of titles on their covers? Those must be the numbers he needs to open the box. So the passcode is 4203. After Sammy opened the box, he started hearing the whispers again. They were coming from the strange book that was in the box. The book was saying, Open me, but to do that, you need to answer the riddle on my cover. In the sun, I dance and play. But in the dark, I fade away. I'm not alive, yet always near. What am I? Can you tell me, dear? The answer is a shadow. As soon as Sammy opened the book, it magically teleported him to a dark forest. He started panicking and running around frantically. That's when he spotted an owl sitting on a branch. The owl said, Lost friend, I can help you find your way out of this labyrinth of trees. But first, you have to hear my riddle. I'm not alive, but I can reflect your fear. Look into me and I'll always be near. What am I must be crystal clear. Do you know the answer? It's a mirror. The owl guided Sammy to a wizard's cottage. Then, Sammy explained his situation to the wizard and convinced him to help. There was only one spell that could send Sammy back to his world and it was in a magic book that was stolen from an evil witch. So, the book was not revealing its secrets to the wizard. There was a riddle at the back of the spell book, and it said, Speak what belongs to you, but is used more by the others, and I shall reveal my secrets. Do you know what that is? It's your name. The Monster Hunters Agency was suspicious that a witch had crossed into our world from the supernatural realm. After following the magic trail the witch left behind, they got suspicious of three people. 
So they placed hidden cameras in their rooms and started observing them sleeping to figure out who the witch was. Can you help them? Okay, each of these people has something in their rooms that indicates they might be a witch. But take a look at the broom inside the first lady's bed. But first of all, it's made of plastic. And it also has a label on it, which means it was bought from the store. The third lady is wearing a glowing amulet. I admit it looks mysterious, but it's just a toy. So the witch is the lady with the pointed hat peeking out from underneath her pillow. And if that doesn't convince you, her black cat sleeping on the other side of the bed will. Amy's town had an old museum that the residents believed to be haunted. Amy and her friends decided to spend the Halloween night inside the museum to have some spooky fun. When the clock struck midnight, all the portraits hanging on the museum walls came to light. Then a portrait of a lady started screaming for some help. She told Amy that the former employees dared to make a fake version of her portrait, and she wanted Amy to destroy it. But once Amy saw the fake portrait, she spotted three differences from the original and assured the lady that it couldn't hold a candle to the original. Can you spot them too? The pendant on the lady's neck, her lipstick color, and the ribbon on her hair are different from the original painting. The spooky traveling circus company was going to visit Evelyn's town to put on a Halloween show, and she really wanted to go. But they were only offering a few tickets to the people who could answer their riddle correctly. With fur as dark as the midnight sky, it's often seen as an omen. Oh my! In superstitions, it takes its place. A witch's companion with mystery and grace. Can you tell what this is? The answer is a black cat. The circus company required all the audience members to come to the show dressed in costumes. So Evelyn headed to the shopping mall to get herself a costume. She found three options to choose from. A witch costume, a mermaid costume, and a Victorian era vampire costume. Which one should she pick? Take a look at the back of the witch costume. It says it's made out of paper, so it'll not be a good idea to wear that. And the mermaid costume is all teared up at the back. So, she should choose the Victorian-era vampire costume. It may look bloody, but it sure fits the theme. It was finally Halloween, aka the day of the show. Evelyn headed to the circus tent to wait in line to enter the venue. But three strange things among the people caught her eye. Can you spot what they are? Look at this guy waiting in the line. His feet are not touching the ground. He's floating. Evelyn also saw her friend Edward waiting in line. As they started waiting together, she learned that Edward's ticket was from the first row and they wouldn't be sitting next to each other. When the circus manager overheard them talking, he suggested that he might be able to change Evelyn's seat. Then he brought three chests, put the new ticket into one, and told Evelyn to follow it. If she was able to tell which chest the ticket was in by the end, he would give it to her. So watch the manager move the chests and help Evelyn win the ticket. The ticket is in this one. Before the show started, Evelyn and Edward went to the cafeteria to grab some snacks. Take a look at these three options. Which one should they get? Take a look at the date that's written on the potato chips package. According to it, the chips expired in 1980, so that's a pass. 
and take a look at the small note below the ice cream. It says it's earwax flavored. Nobody wants to taste that, so they should pick the popcorn. The gooey thing on top of it is just caramel sauce. The show finally began. The first performer was a magician, and his first trick? He teleported from the right side of the stage to the left side. But Evelyn saw right through his illusion and figured out how he did it immediately. Can you? Look behind this curtain. There is a portable projection machine. It sure has something to do with that. As the spooky show continued, Evelyn realized that something was off with some of the performers on the stage. She started suspecting that some of the circus members might not be human after all. Can you tell what made her think so? Take a look at the singer first. She has gills at the sides of her neck. Secondly, did you notice the yellow, long, sharp nails of the juggler? And lastly, the rope walker has a tail at the back. Once the show was finally over, the circus manager came to the stage and said, Ladies and gentlemen, we've been lying to you. You see, we're actually creatures of the underworld and we came here to steal your souls. All the exits in our tent are magically sealed, so you can't escape. Only those who know our riddle correctly will be freed. I have a mouth, but I can't speak. I run, but I can't walk. What am I? Can you help everyone escape? The answer is a river. <laughs>